My friends at UVI just made a new plugin. It's called Shade. Now, it's labeled as an EQ, but it's so much more than an EQ. It's not just the most comprehensive one out there, but it's literally a production tool. To show you all the features and all the things this plugin can do, it would be a two hours video and we'll be scratching the surface. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna show you how I actually used it for mixing and producing this techno track. Let's get to it. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbest TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugin, discounts, and link to the plugin that we are seeing today, UVI Shade. And if the videos are helping you, you want to support the channel, but most important now, access to the all new, in-depth mixing and mastering videos and courses here on the channel without having to go to another side, sign to another side, click the join button down here, see all the perks of becoming a Mixbest TV member, which includes mix consultations with me via Skype or email. Let's get to the video. Let's get right into it. For this track, I only use Shade as my equalizer. I didn't use any other equalizer. The entire song is mixed just basically with Shade. But I didn't use it just as an equalizer. I used it for so many cool effects, and that's what I'm about to show you in this video, as opposed to just show you the technical side of the plugin. It feels, like I said, it's so deep and endless possibilities with it. This is the interface right here. This is not just a very high quality equalizer with all the filters that you can possibly need. Uh, analog curves, you can see here, has some utility preset for seven band, five band, API, Chandler, and so on. But I will show you the plugin as we go, what I did for this track. But the real innovation is the massive amount of modulation options that you have which includes envelope figure followers, we will see a random spread, and then multiple phase filters, multiple comp flanger filters, and the special gain, which turns the EQ in a dynamic EQ just like that, tilt and expander. We'll see all of this. Let's listen to the track really quick. Okay, you get the idea. There's a lot of movement, a lot of filtering, a lot of cool effects, and I did all of these with just shade, nothing else. You can see my session. I have like a plugin for uh, gain staging, and that's about it. So let's start with the intro of the song. I have two bass synths here. The first one is this, and the second one is this. All right, when they start, they are filtered for the intro, and that's what I did on these two, you can tell. I have a low cut filter on both to make the DJ effect of the intro, and then you can see right away these two modulation. Let's hear them in action, then I'll show you uh, how they're done. All right, let's start with the first one. Okay, the first thing that I did is this, I automated this low cut here, and this is the very first modulation, one of the many tricks you can do with this plugin. So I boosted this frequency here around 2K, and it's modulated here by this LFO. Now with this EQ, you can open so many different kinds of trigger for modulation. Envelope will follow the input signal. Figure, which is this one right here on the next instances, and you have several uh, shapes for this figure modulation. We will see that later. MSEG, which is a step sequencer. Random, which is a random modulation. Spread, which I have it right here. And as you can see from my graphic, it spread the frequency for left and right channel. And again, you can modulate the spread with one of the followers or LFO here. This creates very cool stereo effect. The cool thing, you can assign any of the modulation modules to any of the knobs. 
just by dragging and dropping it there. And there you go. You don't like it, double click and it's gone. It's a deep tool, but they made it so very easy to use. And also they kept in mind CPU. So this beast is also actually very good on CPU. Let's listen to this. This modulate this frequency spread frequencies left or right and make it a little more interesting. So that's the first one. And then when the first eight bars end, we have the low pass filter that is automated to go away. All right, and also I have this boost here to make this bass a little thicker. So you use this one as bread and butter EQ. On top of that, you have all the crazy modulation effects. Same for the other intro sound that I have is this. It's a lot flatter without it. And I use this figure here. You can see, so the oscillation follows that figure. It has so many shapes. And then at the beginning, I also have something on the kick drum, same concept to make it radio-y. So I used it to band pass my kick drum. Let's see here. So the low cut goes away and I use this one as a dynamic EQ, as you can see here. So it notched this frequency around 160 every time the kick hits. To do it, in this case, I use an envelope. So it follows the envelope of the kick. You can use a follower. And like I said before, you just drag and drop whatever modulator you want on any of the knobs. This one at the top, it looks like a low cut, a simple low cut, but it's not. This is actually one of the special filters that UVI has, it's called Expander. And every time you select one filter, these controls, of course, will change. And if I scroll, or I can also open the GUI more, because it's completely resizable, as you can see, this type of filter has frequency Q mode, look how many types of filter you have available, thickness and drive. And for the drive, you have the amount and also two types of drive, a soft saturation and a hard clip. All right, in this case, I use hard clip. Listen to this kick without it. All right, the drive is what gives this kick the knock. So this EQ is also a saturator. Well, let's go on. I did a really cool trick here on the open hi-hats that you can hear. This is very subtle, but it helps the uh, hi-hats to be like a little more stereo and a little more interesting again. As you can see, I just used this high shelf EQ and I added a modulator to it. So is this one, is the spread. Without it, with it, has this movement left and right and it makes uh, this uh, open head a little more wide and stereo. It's more interesting. Okay, as the song progresses, we have new sounds coming in. The first one is this other synth. Which is a clean version of this rolling bass that comes after uh, when the actual song starts. So on this one, I use shade two, and that's similar to what I did before. I have a low cut here, and then this peak EQ. This is a normal filter peak. You have resonant, you have EQ. You can use this as an analog EQ, has analog curves or completely digital, by the way. But to this one, I added again, this random modulator here, and you can see it's here on the frequency, so it moves the frequency. And then I added again, my favorite, the spread. It changes the sound a lot. That bark in the middle around 800, it gives more intelligibility to this rolling bass. And also there's again this subtle movement left and right, but you don't lose the mid because the modulation happens only here in the mid range. It's totally cool. Here I use the same trick that I did on the kick drum. I use the special expander filter and I use the drive, 9, 10 dB of drive, and I use the soft saturation.
You hear this is what gives the tone to this rolling bass in the mix without and with. Then I have another sound that comes in. Well, it's the snare. First of all, it, the snares come in. I actually have a hard snare and a clap. For this one, shade again, I used this moving filter at the top. Let me solo it for you. This does two things. It removes the harsh high end that I don't want. And also again, it gives this slight movement, which I did with these two modulators. An LFO, I connect it to the Q of the uh, low pass filter. And then the random module, I connect it to the frequency. So the frequency is moving and it's also moving left and right. And you can hear because of the corner frequency of the low pass kind of changes a little bit. It goes a little higher and then comes back. It's a way to make this very mechanic snare sounds a little more human than the clap. Static for this one. And you can see here, I used one of the many utility presets that this EQ has five band EQ and it comes out with five bands. Uh, seven bands EQ will filters. You have this, the layout basically for the API 5 EQ. You can see here. Then you have the Chandler EQ with all presets already done to start with. You have the Pultec layout and you have the Triton layout. So it's also a utility bread and butter EQ. We are at the clap. So I just did this static filter in here. and remove the frequencies that I didn't want. In the mix without these two. All right, it makes it sit a little better, although in this track the snare is prominent. Then we have this other sound that comes in here. see how easy it is to shape the tone of an instrument, especially for synth. That's why I picked techno, an EDM track to show you this, because you usually have pretty static sounds, even if they have uh, evolving parts and stuff. This is so easy to do, to add movement to any track. And it's not only for electronic music, of course, there's so many tricks you can do on rock on any other genre. For this one, I did it pretty much the same. I like this function to just randomly move a frequency just a little bit and then spread it left and right. You have a stereo control here, you see? So you can decide how much difference you want from left and right when doing any of the modulation. So that was the other sound. Let's keep going. All right, the next sound that comes in is this nasty distorted kick drum here. That is my favorite effect on this song. Uh, so without it, it sounds like this, a plain mono. It's a cool sound, but with EQ. Right, I started this from the liquid phaser preset in the moving effects section. I modified it slightly. You can see this one is the filter, right? Phaser classic. So this shape of the filters here is just one of the many filters that you have there. Then you add the modulation. For this one, for example, the LFO, is doing the movement. But watch this. See here in the phase knob, there's an S1, all right? This L1, F1 are, of course, what it's connected to what. So if you see this shape here, it's not here, all right? We have six shapes. There's not this one. I did this, and you can do it too, just by dragging. So if I remove it, just by dragging, I open a spread module, and I simply drag and drop it there. 
So now the spread also modulates the phase of the LFO and creates this double movement. And I also have this red filter here, which is a multi-pass, multi-resonant filter, so a band pass. And you can see here, the red one is where I cut the low end and I cut the high end a little bit, but this one modulates as well. You have the LFO that modulates the frequency, the LFO that modulates the Q, so it just not only moves left and right, but the Q opens and closes. Same for the Q width. Last one is just a simple high pass, uh, sorry, low pass here. Let's hear it in the song, without and with. For this sound, I also created a delay sand. You can hear repeating it, and it's right there just to show you what I use because I used um, a shade on the return of the delay as well. So this is, let me try to solo it. This is the sound with the delay. And as you can see, I used uh, Relayer UVI. I just wanted to do everything by using UVI plugins, and Relayer is an absolutely great delay if you don't know it. Check it out, you also find my Mixbus TV presets in there. Regardless, this is the shade that I have after the delay, so without it. It is very bright and it was kind of intrusive in the mix. Let me play you in the mix. With shade on, it sounds like this. Pretty cool, it's just a delay, but the way it moves it, it makes it really interesting. I have just a simple low cut here, and here we go with the modulation on the high cut. Let me show it to you. So you have the panel that you can open, and again, I have, in this case, M1 and M2. I have the, basically what it does, the modulation is the LFO again. You can see the settings, and the movement is wide, it's all the way wide, so you can see where it is, right? And again, you can, change it but just by scrolling on it and the LFO itself you have many controls here you can sync it to tempo like this you can double the tempo you can do the negative see So every module really has so many possibilities. And in one of the latest uh, update, they added a limiter. So if you do crazy effects, you're not gonna clip. That was added in the recent update and it was very welcome. So this was the delay. I also have a reverb for that sound. And I also, to this reverb, I'm sending other things. I don't remember what exactly. All right, the, the symbols, the reverse symbols. So let's take a look at the reverb. The reverb itself, it makes it more like EDM dance hall kind of vibe. Without it, it would sound very dry. With it. So it has this stadium kind of space around it. And here again, for the reverb, I did a simple trick. I used the gain special again, one of the special filters. This one is gain. And I modulated the gain, again, with the LFO. And I modulated the phase of the LFO with the spread, and you have this auto pan left and right. In the mix, without these two. So it kind of adds another layer of ambient. I literally have only these two effects on this track. We can keep going. So we have the annoying woodblock sound. And for this one, again, I used two moving filters. I just wanted to, one, create this stereo, moving stereo panning effect. And I use this bandpass multi-resonant, which cut the low end and high end. I'm not just modulating with the LFO this time. I use the follower. So 
This follower, you can see, it modulates the Q, F1 and F1, you have all the letters here. The follower basically follows the incoming signal, you can see it in the graphic. And it's what gives the resonance in this case. If I turn it all the way up, you can see it better. So it helps gives this pretty basic sound. Again, a little bit of movement. Then we go on, there are more sounds. For this one, I use just basic EQ to remove the low end on this main synth. And then we have the second main synth here. That's a little more interesting. So these two, this starts first and the second comes after four bars. A little bit of modulation. I created this one from scratch. So I use, the first one is a phaser filter and it's an extended phaser filter. You can see, and I'm modulating both with R1, the frequency and again, the spread. You see? The comp filtering now, you see the gray uh, filter behind the white one. That's the difference in left and right. If I do this, you can change it, see? And it's very cool. And I, of course, removed the low end, which was, this was the sub sound there. So subtle moves, but it's so easy to use. Like you can, you want to add another one. There you go. You want to modulate the cue with this. You add it to it, that's exaggerated to see the effects. This is how easy it is to add a movement and modulation, any kind of effects with this EQ. As you can see, I also put it on my two bus and I use this dynamic filter here. I make this normal peak EQ in filter. Remember, you can select the filters from here or here, same thing. And I just made it dynamic. Okay, it's subtle, but what I did is basically a pull tech push pull but dynamic. I'm boosting this frequency here around 64 and I'm removing something here at 123 and but they're both dynamic. I'm now exaggerating it so you can really see. So one F1 modulates the gain up on the fundamental. And the other one uh, take down the 123 so to create a deeper bass every time the kick hits. So this was a, a pretty simple two bus EQ for this for this track, then I have a simple high shelf EQ. The quality of this plugin is insane. The GUI is fully resizable, left, right, top and bottom, everything. The phaser, for example, you have a phaser classic, that's just a filter that you can modulate or not. Extend it, so just to scroll down few, notch multi-resonant, then you have this, band pass resonant, the tilt, which is a simple tilt filter, and then the special expander, which, like I said before, it has the drive options, which is 
which are really, really cool. I wanted to show you this like this in a real session as opposed to go into all the parameters for every modulator and stuff. But the take home message would be not only you have everything for your bread and butter EQ and more with all the filters that it has, but the modulation sections really allows you to create like crazy different effects or subtle effects, especially with the stereo panning options. They're really cool. And that is super, super easy to use. Like it can get uh, more intuitive than this. You want this there, just drag and drop it down. You don't want it anymore, double click it and it's gone. So this was Shade by UVI Plugins. I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment down below. If you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a like and share. And if you want access to the exclusive content, in-depth mixing and mastering video, which are exclusive here on YouTube, they're not going to be published anywhere else. Click the join button, see all the perks of becoming a Mixed Best TV member. Follow Mixed Best TV on Instagram and Facebook. There's a lot of exclusive pictures, clips of my mixes, my mastering, and I pop up live here and there and just take a couple of questions while I'm actually working. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell. It helps the channel a lot. Stay safe. See you next time. Hands on my neck, hands